We have Christian in the UK who has hypothetical evidence to convince an atheist to believe in God. So welcome, Christian. You got two atheists here. What do you mean by hypothetical evidence? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not normally convinced by hypotheticals. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you don't have yeah. to ask that. Oh, sorry. Hi. Uh, but yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm an atheist. Uh, uh, but I've been watching the shows for years and years. But I just had I had a few, a couple of questions, really, to to sort of help in my own understanding. Um, sure. With especially the nature of evidence, uh, as in sufficient slash good evidence versus bad slash insufficient evidence. Now, my first question really was given the nature of divine propositions and the amount of time you guys have given on these questions, do you think that you will ever hear any good enough evidence in the lifetime of this show? That's my first question. What difference does the answer make? Sorry? What difference does the answer make? If I say, yeah, I think I might hear yeah. evidence or no, I don't think I'm gonna hear evidence. That's completely irrelevant to whether or not there has been presented evidence at all or you know what we think about whether or not there's going to be evidence uh, is independent from whether or not there will be. But no, I don't think it's likely. Okay, okay fair enough. Yeah, con uh, considering the course, caliber of what we've been presented with so far, I'm not holding my breath, if that makes yeah. any sense. Okay, okay, okay. And my follow-up question was, um, I know, Matt, especially, you guys have said that uh, uh, you don't really know what sort of evidence will convince you of a god. Uh, I personally, as an atheist, I think this, this, this hypothetical evidence that I'll, well, this hypothetical situation that I'll present to you, I think if, if it was to me, I think I will be convinced at least of their claim of being divine. Basically, uh, if someone were to come to you and they say they are divine and what makes them divine, w w one of their powers or if their, or their main power is basically they can genuinely and consistently read, read people's minds i.e they can read your mind mad they can read anyone's mind now will that convince you of their claim that they're divine or will that just make you think hmm maybe this is part of the human brain now science has, hasn't discovered yet and then this guy is, somehow has, has sort of uh tapped onto that power so will you, will you think that they're right. divine if the they can consistently do that or would you, you just think it's a superhuman ability we haven't discovered yet okay you're, replace you're setting up reading before... somebody's mind Sorry? Yeah. yeah, you're setting up a false dichotomy. Would you believe yeah. that they're divine or would you think this is a better explanation? The only question is, are you convinced that they're divine? No, I don't even know what divine means. We'd have to have a discussion about divine. If divine is identical to can read minds, well, then they're divine. Yeah. Right. I, I was going to say replace reading their mind with any other mundane thing today that would have been considered divine or magical or whatever however many years ago say, uh, you know, I, I, this, this person has this amazing magical ability to talk to somebody in China and know what's going on at the exact moment that's happening. Well, that's a freaking cell phone. But if you tell me that in the middle ages, it's extraordinary and there must be magic. They must be divine. They must be whatever. Like in order for me to say, okay, yes, this extraordinary thing, like reading minds or whatever is divine. You first have to prove to me that that's part of being divine because otherwise, wow, they have superpowers. It doesn't make them a God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, if, if somebody can demonstrate that they have extraordinary abilities, awesome, no problem. They have extraordinary abilities. Yeah. If if they then try to leverage that into, um, therefore they are a god, okay, uh, maybe, maybe in the, the very humble god psychic. among men kind of category, but okay, okay. So so basically, what you're saying is if the definition of divine means that you know you can read people's mind and in that sense they are divine but not not only other but not, not not only that because like i don't want to like i don't want to come across as that one guy who is like well if you change the meaning of the word penguin then you can say there's a million penguin or what you know that was a few weeks ago that caller but i i just mean to say that like <laughs> that has to be a part of it. It's not to say that that's how we're going to define it all of a sudden, because yeah, we could go change the dictionary definition of divine as holy and spiritual and also mind reader or whatever. But I'm saying if they are divine, that comes with a lot of qualifications. There's a backstory there. There's not just I'm divine. So, so be it. It's a surprise it's, well, what's your lineage? Like what, what world do you come from? What are the physics according to you? You know what I mean? There's, there's a lot there that it would have to conform to that mind reading would then be a part of. It wouldn't just be that we change the definition and decided this is what divinity means. You know what I mean? Even if, 
But even if like mind reading were one aspect of what we considered the divine, that on its own wouldn't confirm that anybody's divine. Just like one aspect of being an NBA player, a a professional NBA player, is to be a human. Well, I'm fucking human, and I'm never going to be a professional (laughs) NBA player. So you have to look at each of the criteria for it. So the first thing needs to happen if you're going to say, is somebody divine, is to define what we mean by divine. Okay. Oh, fair enough. And the last one, again, in, in, in just talking about evidence, um, I wanted to understand uh, when we mean sufficient or good evidence versus bad or insufficient insufficient evidence, because I remember one of the shows I watched, uh, I can't remember who said it on the panel, but they gave an example of uh, 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 someone, one of the panelists said, uh, don't you think that people had evidence that the earth was flat back then, you know, obviously, when people, when we knew, when we thought the earth was flat. So did they have evidence or was it not uh, sufficient evidence or because things like maybe they, you know, they can maybe walk on earth, they would think that it's flat and all of those things. But now we have, yeah. uh, so basically I'm trying to understand does evidence evolve? Now we have satellite imagery and astronomy and all of that. Now we have a, so, a sort of evolved evidence to, to know that the earth is round. And is there going to be in 50 years time, 100 years time, it, like a third tier type evolved evidence that can portray reality in a different light. No, 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 uh, no, that's a good question. No, at all times in history, you reach the best conclusion you can reach based on all of the available evidence. At some point, it was perfectly reasonable, given the available information, to conclude that the sun went around the earth because that was what you directly observed. And it wasn't that that information or that that evidence was bad, it's that that evidence was incomplete. When we gathered more evidence about the Earth, we realized that that initial assumption, however obvious and reasonable it was at the time, is no longer reasonable in the face of new evidence. That's what's going on. Either corrected evidence or new evidence is how you refine your model. That's all that's going on here. It's not like there's a third tier of evidence. We just got more information. Yeah, I, I was just looking because I was seeing if I could find the guy's name quickly while Matt was speaking, and I can't. But there's a an old anecdote about this guy who's a, a famous mathematician whose name I do not remember. Um, and the story goes that he was speaking to one of his friends in the halls of the university, and his friend said, you know, how is it that we assume that it was just the natural state of things that people thought that the sun orbited the Earth? And... He, you know, the guy says, you know, well, what, what, you know, isn't it obvious that the, 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 you know, that the sun doesn't over the, how could people think that this is what it looks like? And the famous mathematician guy said, well, what would it look like right. if the sun did orbit the earth? What exactly mm-hmm. would you see? And the idea is that it's this, it would look exactly like this. And so, you know, right. in, in, you know, in relation to what Matt was saying is that like, we, we only had a little bit of evidence and a little bit of evidence can be misleading. And the more evidence you get, the closer you get to the right answer. But the fact of the matter is you never get to see the whole picture. Reality is what reality is. And, and all we're doing is building models of it. It's like, if I say I had a map from the 1600s, it's better than no map at all, but it's certainly not as good as Google maps. And Google maps is also wrong because things are changing all the time. And the earth is what the earth looks like. And a map is just the best that we have. Every model is wrong. Every theory is wrong. Some of them are useful. And so the more we build on our evidence. So I said, I think it's a great question that you asked because yeah, the more evidence that we get, the more things we learn, these tiers of evidence you're talking about, the more cool stuff we're going to find out. But the idea that we're going to completely and fundamentally change our understanding of reality is a bit off-putting because what's happened is that like that's happening less and less. We're just getting closer to the truth. We have, we're, we're at the point now where we're not having to take huge mighty chunks out of our perception of reality. We're just narrowing in what we have with new and better evidence all the time. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense uh, for us uh, getting closer and closer to the truth. So, and the evidence that we have today can explain uh, pretty much everything regarding the uh, the uh, shape of the Earth back then. Uh, it's just sort of it's a closer to the truth type of evidence. Yep. Uh, whereas I'm guessing the evidence they would have had back then couldn't have explained certain other things. Maybe they never investigated. But if they tried to investigate mm-hmm. those things, maybe the evidence that they had back then wouldn't have been able to to explain that. Uh, so uh, so, so, are we going to call that uh, uh, insufficient evidence? Or, 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 sh- surely we're not going to call it bad evidence. We're just going to call it it wasn't sufficient back then, maybe. 
Well, there's different. There's some evidence that's bad evidence where you you have a particular perception that you're going to call evidence and you find out it's just wrong, just like the data was yeah. incorrect. And then there's others where it's insufficient. Um, okay. It depends. There, there's That's two different categories. Okay. Uh, that, that was a uh, that was a lot helpful. Uh, thanks for for your time. Yeah, uh, cheers. Yeah, it will make me think about the nature of evidence, and then uh, yeah, thanks for for your time. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Christian. Great call, man. Thanks so much for calling.